Ah, painting. A divine expression of artistic ability. Able to showcase the intricacies of the human experience, like Andrew W.K. doing his thing. Painting can also just be a bunch of bullshit shapes. This painting says that even if you spill coffee on a piece, you can still sell it. This painting here is just for dads. And this painting is for people who like foot stuff. This piece dares to ask, what if Bratz dolls were shrooms? Are you kidding me? This one's an art piece? Oh, okay, I guess it just fell. This art is geese. I... Okay. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on here. Hey, quick reminder that child labor is illegal. Girl, same. Nope, this one's just a window. Are you kidding me? Really? Really? You may love a thing that I detest. Bagpipes, long hikes, sweater vests. Our interests are all varying. It's fun to be contrarian. But I'll try things that you all love to see if I can rise above. But maybe there's a chance that I just won't. So in that case, don't mind if I don't. Welcome to Don't Mind If I Don't. Hey, I'm your host, Aaron Gold. This is the show where I don't like things, and then fans and experts of those things convince me that I'm wrong. I am an artist. I make the comedies and the acatings, and I'm a big fan of trying new mediums out. But I cannot paint. Painting is messy and inaccurate. It boggles my mind that some people can create such sharp strokes using stuff that looks like Peter Gallagher's eyebrow on a stick. I feel like I never know how much paint to load up, but it's always either too little or too globby. So seeing other people do precise work sets off that part of my brain that tells me I suck. I fully admit that painting takes talent, but the artists that just paint squares and call that art drive me insane. Just because you were the person to market those squares doesn't make you a genius, Mark Rothko. Art should make you feel something, sure, but not really. That counts as brilliant. I can't wrap my head around drawing a blue square next to a white square and going, anxiety. I also need to stress that I like most artistic reinterpretations of things. But Christ alive, I don't need to see another bowl of fruit. If you have the ability to paint things realistically, why choose a banana and some grapes? Make something we've never seen before. Do a mermaid fighting Bigfoot, or robots fighting ghosts, or dolphins fighting UFOs. Okay, so Keith Haring gets it. Just have some fun with it is what I'm saying. I cannot tell the difference between most classic painters. I mean, how many old people riding horses do you really need to see? With classic painting, it feels like your only options are flowers or just the flattest asses. And it takes a special level of ability to make orgies look boring. Jackson Pollock, he's famous for splattering certain colors in certain ways. And you know what? Fine, that's sometimes cool. But the people who go balls deep into, ooh, what he meant to say by using warm colors is that life is a process of learning and growing and just shut the hell up! Sometimes the thing is blue just because it's fucking blue! Also, painting's messy. I don't like getting messy. That's how COVID spreads. Everything on this show gets rated on a scale of zero, my ambivalence, to negative 10, my blood-curdling hatred. Painting clocks in at a negative four. Of all the visual arts, None feel more up its own ass than painting. There's this movie called La Belle Noiseuse. It is three and a half hours of some old creep trying to paint a naked woman just right to the point of it tearing apart two relationships. It is much more boring than it sounds, and that is the future painters want. However, this is Don't Mind If I Don't. So I have no choice but to see if I can learn to enjoy painting. Joining me today, as always, is artist, journalist, photographer, and painter, Christine Stoddard. Christine, how's it going? Uh, it was going great until you just dissed one of my favorite things. Well, it's a stupid thing. It's not a stupid thing. Oh, right, because you've got a uh, showing at the Queen's Botanical Garden going on. What, what do you have, like one or two pieces up or something?
Ow. Joining us today are mixed media artist, writer, and English professor at Concord College, Megan J. Meehan. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for being had. We are equally happy. <laughs> also joining us is painter and professor of the Foundations of Art at CUNY, Diana Nakarado. Thank you so much for having me here. You are also welcome to that. <laughs> We're nailing it. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for being here, as we've said. Now, why are you wasting your lives on this dead medium? <laughs> Painting is not a dead medium. Painting makes you feel alive, and it brings things into the world that otherwise wouldn't exist. So, uh, well, Photoshop exists. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I mean by that is that when you paint something, or when you, like I'm a mixed media artist, for example, you sculpt something, you put something together, it basically comes directly from your imagination, and I like the fact that it is hands-on. It gets you away from the screen for a while, makes something beautiful and colorful, and brings joy to people. I'm sure that you can appreciate that. You have seen her Oh, yeah, I'm work. full of joy right now. Yeah. <laughs> She's so happy, and you just want to piss on her happiness. I want to piss on everything. <laughs> That's what this show is about. Me and my big piss. <laughs> What about you, Diana? I think painting gives us access to something about being human that other things don't really give us access to. So in a way, it lets us live forever, in a sense, because That's if you stretch. paint something, and then hundreds of years later, somebody is looking at that work at a museum, and it's almost like you're having a conversation with that artist from so long ago and engaging with their ideas in a way that can happen with books, too, and other mediums, but it feels, to me, extra special when it's in the visual medium. I mean, well, that's what pictures is for. Sure, and I think that's fair, because also a lot of people throughout history have said that once photography came about, the role of painting changed a lot. The period of art that I really like looking at, when abstraction starts to come about, when painting can do something that photos can't do. Okay, define abstraction. Just, I mean. Obviously, I know what it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you know, for the people, oh, what, is, what is abstract? Well, by definition, it's a very difficult thing to explain, but I'll try my best. Does not it's, help. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> but it's a, it's a way to look at the world around us, real things, concrete things, things that exist, and create something new from them that's really just boiling them down to their most essential elements, like color, shape, form, texture, things like that. So it's really a way, just another way of expressing ideas, another tool in the artist's toolkit. So it's like an orange, but then you get it wrong. Maybe this <laughs> orange is a square. Ooh, arts! But when you create artwork and you're putting it together, it's funny because you were kind of having a conversation with yourself and with the medium itself. So you can start out with an idea, like I'm going to make this green and purple, and then as you're working, oh no, I need to add a blue, I need to add a silver, because the piece almost talks to you, and it's kind of like a great way to just find new ways to do things, different ways to do things. It's great for creative thinking and approaches that are not so rigid. And people who are good at artwork tend to be more creative, they tend to be um, a little bit more flexible in how they think, and that can actually make them better at even traditional jobs, because if they come upon a problem, they are more easily able to get around it than somebody who is more rigid. You just described wow. a lot of improv in a way, mm -hmm. right? And you yes. love You are improv. pandering to me yes, so I hard. Yes, I am. That's why I'm <laughs> here. This is my role. It's a different <laughs> form of improv. That's what abstract art is basically the improv of the art world. I guess I don't mind abstract art uh, to a point. Like if you're just going like blue, orange, maybe a green. <laughs> but it, if it looks cool, cool. Like mm -hmm. that's, I'm fine with that. But I am so bored with a lot of like realist art that is just like another bowl of fucking fruit. <laughs> like, and I get the the point is to try to capture the image, but oh, it's artistic. <laughs> it's a bowl of fucking fruit. Like, isn't that boring? Aren't you bored by that? I think I'm more drawn toward looking at work by artists like maybe Audrey Flack, who chooses objects that are very personal. And they start to tell a bit of a story about her and her life and her interests. So you might see photographs from her personal photo collection and jewelry and just things that she would like to have around her. Then you look at something like that 
and it feels like there's something more than just look how nicely I can paint. I'm actually also telling a story. Certainly, I'm less excited about those works. Okay, yeah. okay. So uh, at least we're we're vibing on I some think degree so. now. I, think so. oh, yeah, yeah. I like that. One yeah. art form leads to another. So you think about still lives, right? Like fruits and flowers. Have you ever seen the artwork of Georgia O'Keeffe? Uh, the vagina she, one? <laughs> yeah. She, they yeah. were not vaginas, they were flowers. She was very annoyed yeah, when people but, would say that they were vaginas. Let's be. She would get very angry when they, and that was, her own husband would actually say that to get people like into the gallery, and she was very annoyed by that, because she was like, they're not, they're flowers. Because her, if, if, I'm sorry, if you tell him they're flower paintings, he's, he doesn't yeah, exactly. know what so, you're talking about. You know, in about. a way, this is a way to get him interested in it. If they're it both, that, that's artistic, that it, I can appreciate of something like, is it this or is it this? Ooh, <laughs> well, that's the thing like about that's cool, art. but. It's different for everybody that looks at it. How do you teach still life drawing and painting to your students in foundations? I would start them off by just setting up a still life in the center of the room, having all the students sit around the still life, and just do blind contour drawings. Have you heard of these before? Are you probably familiar yeah. with blind contour? It's no. When you're basically I mean, yes, but you know, <laughs> just for them. You're basically taking... I'm smart. <laughs> I know. <laughs> God, that was the worst thing you could have said back. I know, sweetie. It's we basically we take objects and then we take a pencil or charcoal and we just draw them without actually trying to draw them. So we can't look at the paper. The idea is just to look at the forms, look at the shapes, and make something that ends up being abstract. But that's kind of the first step. That sounds it fun. A, it is. That fun. sounds like a fun challenge. Uh, that isn't. Let me draw another white person on a horse, which <laughs> like, I feel like is the majority of paintings. Yeah. Is there, are there classic painters that you find that are just overrated? Hmm. Call them out. Question. Let's call them out. <laughs> Think about this. Um, Bonus points if they're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I personally find abstract art a lot more pleasing to look at than something like classic Rembrandt's, for example. Even though Hear he was Rembrandt? a master of light and color, I would much rather look at uh, Moreau up. or Matisse, or that's just my personal opinion. And I find that even if there's a piece I'm not really connecting with at the museum or in a book or whatever it is, if I give it more time, it's kind of like a person, I guess, in a way. Like You can usually get to find something you like about it or at least appreciate about it, even if you're not going to hang out with them every day kind of thing. So I feel like that helps me. Keeping that mindset helps me kind of discover new artists and yeah, find something that's exciting. You just spend a little bit more time and eventually you get to love them. <laughs> Hey, I just got that! <laughs> <laughs> so with the painting exercises, with contour drawing, for instance, do you put fruit and flowers there as the still life subjects? Typically I do at the beginning, and then as the semester goes along and I start to get to know the students and see what they're interested in, I'll have them bring in their own objects or start to look out into the real world outside of this little constructed environment that we make in the classroom, so they might do views from their window at home, and mm. you get all these really interesting stories. Even if the skill is still being built, I just want to see that they're looking critically at the world. There were other artists that also played with shapes, like Kadinsky, for example. I don't know if you've seen his work. It's beautiful. We'll it's have some intricate. appearing right here. Yes, it's very... <laughs> oh, wow, look at those. <laughs> yes. Editing! So the way that you teach your students, you encourage them to be individuals. It's not just, well, here's the bowl of fruit, you all have to paint it the same way. You want them to make different things. You want them to find their own voice. That means that you've really found your own style. If like, you're, let's say you're, you're spending some time painting and your plan later is to go out to a nice dinner or, or, or see your friends, uh, or something fancy maybe. Mm -hmm. And oh no, I can't, I got blue all over. <laughs> Always, that's the story of my life. I'm always finding paint. So do something else. I like to think of it as sort of taking an idea apart, taking something apart, making a mess of it, and then putting it back together. The final mm -hmm. piece, even if it might look like it's very expressive and it might look messy, the final piece is just kind of a result of that experiment. That's how I like to think of it. Percentage of time, how often do you make such a big mess you can't get the paint off your hands. Do you looked at the 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 painting and then go like that was worth it? Percentage of time. Oh, very not very often. 
Honestly, there, for every one piece, I'm just going to mm. be honest with you on this one. I hear oh. what you're saying because <laughs> it feels good. I'm just soaking up the right. <laughs> mm. ah. I think for every one, I mean, it's hard to say numbers, but for every one piece that I make that I'm satisfied with and that I put out into the world and shows and on my website and whatnot, there are probably 10 or 15 pieces that didn't make the cut. And for me, with when I'm working with paintings, especially larger scale paintings that you know, are, are harder to store and they cost more to purchase, I tend to just paint over them and make it into a new one and try to forget what happened before <laughs> and just move on if I can. As far as cleaning your hands go, pumice stones. Get a pumice stone. That will clean off pretty much everything, including oils. Although with oil paints, if you get it on your clothes, it's a disaster. But if you get it on your hands, you might need some turpentine to clean it off and then you need to wash your hands with soap. So because I've got to buy special cleaning stuff too. <laughs> yeah, with just... oils, with oils, not with acrylics or watercolors. Okay. <laughs> what do you like to paint with? Acrylics and watercolors. <laughs> All right, good. So you see, that's, that's what I have at home. She doesn't torment you with oils. No, she yet. has other things like yeah. glitter. <laughs> Oh, oh glitter. glitter. It's great. I don't glitter. hate glitter. I hate when glitter gets everywhere. I love glitter. Glitter is forever. Ever. You're not glitter allowed in my make, home. Glitter makes everything fabulous, right? Everything is better with glitter. I mean, look at who you're talking to. Look at my necklace. Look at you my have to hair. Choose my me or her. Look at my nails. Look at this. <laughs> Aaron doesn't like pretension in art, which is one of the reasons why I think him disliking glitter is so. Okay, let's clarify. I don't dislike glitter. I dislike, oh, you made a piece two months ago and I'm still <laughs> picking little bits of blue off of me. It makes you look more fabulous. Bish, I don't need help. <laughs> do, you, do you guys choose to express yourself via painting just because you're so awkward at talking? Is like, is that? Partly. Okay. Yeah, I think that's part of it. I love being alone, and I get to be alone when I paint, so nobody bothers me I'm when I'm painting. Way. So introvert. I think that's part of it. I'm definitely an introvert. I do get that. That's yeah, my. That's, Aaron do love his podcast time. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So how long did it take you to get good at painting? Hmm. And is there a way to condense that into a 28-minute program? <laughs> I've been painting since I was 15, I'm 32, and I feel that it's maybe in the past few years that I really started to feel more confident about the work. Let go of ideas of what paintings are, what painting is hmm. and can be. Let go of this idea that you're not good at doing this. Right? I don't like the intense eye contact yeah. you made when you said you're not good. <laughs> Your eyes got three times wider. Just let go. Don't be so self-critical. Yeah, don't be so self-critical when so you're self not good. <laughs> and just and just keep trying. Just keep at it. Just express what it is that's unique about you and unique about your viewpoint of the world or what's ever in your imagination. Just let go of everything that's holding you back. Well, that sounds easy. Is this a photo or is this a painting? This is a photograph. This is a photograph I took. Look at that photograph. You like memes? <laughs> I do. Cool. I can't tell if that's a road or a creek. It's a road, and I'm kind of in the tree, <laughs> looking out at the leaves coming down. This from the tree. looks like somebody is a pervert, but for roads. Yeah, <laughs> I can see what you mean. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you would pervert. Okay, so I'm I'm trying to recreate this. Not exactly. We're just trying to find some element of it that you find interesting or exciting or even just noteworthy, and we'll start there, and then we'll build something around that. So is there anything right. about the picture that you like, the color or shape or something that you see? Uh, it's cool greens. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bunch of them. Greens. Cool. I, I don't mean to, to make fun of your photography, but that's mm. absolutely what I'm doing. <laughs> that's uh, fine. Yeah, I'm like, why, why did you do this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I've been doing an ongoing project where I go out into nature in different parts of New York City and different places where I travel. So this is in Sardinia, Italy, 
and I take photographs and videos and sound recordings in nature and I bring those back to my studio and use them as references for my paintings, which then become entirely abstract and they look nothing like this, but I want them to somehow capture something about the essence of what we're looking so at. So I'm doing, I'm going to capture this thing's essence. In some way, yes. <laughs> we're going to try. Uh, you tricked me into being a pervert. Great. <laughs> and just start mixing it. Man, if I was high, I'd really be entertained by this. <laughs> it's so much fun, So right? play along at home. <laughs> How accurate am I looking to be with this? I don't think it's a. I don't think you should try to be accurate. I think, okay, good. Don't no. worry. I think just try to like pick up on one shape that you see and riff off of that. Well, I see the the dark, the dark green right along the the tree. Yeah, let's do it. Schwab. Oh, look at that! It's moving. Yeah, it's fun, right? Calm down. <laughs> then what do I do? We can definitely mix more paint. Yeah. Let's bring this over here for you. Yeah, give me, give me them globbies. Okay, let's just get this. Give me the globbies and feed my soul. I'm gonna get paint all over my toe. <laughs> I like Hold dipping on. dots. Hold on, wait, let me make this lighter. <laughs> Look, I'm doing art. Yay. You proud yet, Dad? <laughs> try holding the paintbrush less like a pencil. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Something, bring, try to bring some movement in from maybe bah, bah, your wrist. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> And then maybe you could bring your shoulder, exactly. Being a little more expressive with it, maybe just. Yeah, that's <laughs> worse. Covering some more. This feels so awkward. Holding it like this? Yeah, but like, mm -hmm. what, how am I supposed to use my shoulder more? I guess it's easier when we're standing to involve the shoulder in it. But I think, I think you're doing a good job. I think it's you're nice. lying. No. Is this watercolors? Are we doing watercolors? No, we're just <laughs> we're just watering down the acrylic a little bit so that we can see what happens when it's uh, when it's not as solid. When it looks so, a little bit more like sick piss. Yeah, a little more like watercolor. And then you can even experiment with taking some away. I know we just put all of this paint down, but you can <laughs> you can see what happens if you take take a little piece of paper towel and start to. Dab it, maybe bring it around and see what happens. Make the mess. Clean it up. Exactly. Okay. I would like to do Let's switch. less piss. Okay. Let's wake this color up again. Yeah, get up, color. It's time for you to do something <laughs> with your goddamn life. So, so far, this looks bad. <laughs> Just remember, this is the beginning of the painting. Paintings mm -hmm. can take hours or days to make, so often the first beginning stages look like this, very well. Well, we've got a 28 minute show, so <laughs> this one won't. What technique am I doing here? What is this called? You are a wet, painting wet on wet. So, <laughs> sorry, I don't know how else to say it. So just wet paintbrush into the wet canvas. I feel like this doesn't look very good. And that's a long pause she just took. <laughs> so, I think she agrees. Well, I think there's always something to appreciate in a piece. There's definitely like moments that I enjoy here. Um, it feels like the beginning of a painting though. It feels like you just started it and it's not finished yet. You're supposed to make me good at this. Oh, well, I think... There, I did it. It's an <laughs> art. Yay. Compare this with the, uh, the tree I was supposed to do. And... Good job, me? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. We tried different colors, we mixed some colors, we tried different techniques. What did we accomplish here? <laughs> Do you think it's finished? I don't think it needs, it, it, I think this, this segment is. <laughs> here, I did art and that's reality. I didn't do great. Since that last one was a bust, we are going to try something new. 
I'm going to just do a complete forgery of someone who has no right being a famous artist. Mark Rothko, I'm calling your ass out. <laughs> we are gonna do this painting because it's essentially nothing. <laughs> and I'm gonna copy it and get a new career as a forgery artist. Well, the first thing is that we're not using acrylics this time. Given the abysmal failure of the last art project, Ow. I think it's better to start with watercolors, but you will like watercolors because they are not as messy. Hey! So, the first thing you do, you dip the brush into the water, and then you dip it into the yellow right here. Okay. And just swish it around. Swish, swish, swish is rush. I'm taking a bath. And now, if you look at the painting by Rothko, there's this yellow square at the top. So you want to make a yellow square. Where does he come up with this? Good, just keep going. And it doesn't matter if it runs, that, that will be disguised well, later. it doesn't matter to you. This isn't your easel. <laughs> and you see the way that the more color you pick up, and as you put it on the canvas, it kind of automatically makes different shades. That's what a lot of people love about watercolors. Yeah, it's unpredictable, like me. I could do anything right now, but I won't. I'm doing a bullshit square. <laughs> I'm gonna break yeah. this. You're not, you're funny. You had to have more confidence. You're making a beautiful piece I of art. I will break this. Once you master this, then you can start to add your own flair to it if you want. Yeah, maybe make it interesting. Oh, God. Mm. What was that? Mm. It's coming along. Boy, I don't know how to unpack that. <laughs> oh, no. Get out of there. Okay. You can always cover the yellow again. That's true, fuck it. Yeah. So now you're showing how something you didn't initially like, you're making your own through the painting process. Yeah, I'm showing how it can be better and good. So you see, you're proud of yourself. You're proud of your work. I'm proud of sticking it to that fucking hack. <laughs> so we've accomplished something here today. <laughs> you are a good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> you want to you take the smaller brush? Don't, don't help me. That. I can do this. I'm a painting master. Look at me. I'm the Mark Rothko now. You remember that from Shrek? And that's one of the really wonderful things about art. Even if you don't make a masterpiece, if you have fun painting, if you enjoy yourself, then it's worth it. That was very sweet. I don't... <laughs> Why did that get a laugh? That was a genuine emotion. Fuck all of you. I'm allowed to, I'm allowed to be affected. God damn it, I'm a person. Now, did you want to try to make it look exactly like Rothko? Yeah, I want to prove how bullshit he was. Okay, so what you do, we take the paper, and you just dab, 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 and basically erase the orange. Look and at that! You can add some yellow if you want. So I did, I, I'm doing a Mark Rothko, everybody. Look at how close they are. Yeah! It's amazing. That's the same thing. <laughs> so it's amazing, you're successful. I did are it. You, are you proud of yourself? You yeah, feel I feel like a happy little tree. Excellent. Yeah. And remember, even if it doesn't look exactly like the original. Which it does. In painting, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. Yeah, and people gaming the system. <laughs> uh, which I don't mind ripping off rich people, because they've had their turn. Hey, Bob Ross, what do you learn today? I learned that my name's Aaron Gold, and we're not role-playing right now. OK, so. well, so tell me all about painting. Well, sometimes it's good and uh, precise and weird. And sometimes it's just shapes and it doesn't matter. That's upside down. It doesn't matter! Turn it the right way. Okay, look. The Boom, good. now it's a Mark Rothko. Yeah, who's we did it. dead? He famously committed suicide. Good. <sighs> okay, and this one, is that also upside down? That no. actually not, does not look bad that way. Okay, so how do you rank painting now? Well, if painting started as a negative four, painting now clocks in at zero. <gasps> I am ambivalent to painting. Sometimes it's, it's, it's done well, sometimes it can just be bullshit and sells for thousands of dollars. Nothing matters, buy gold, bury it in your backyard, who cares? Okay, let's cheers to that. Well, for Christine Stoddard and everyone here at Don't Mind If I Don't, I'm Aaron Gold saying, do your don'ts. Tink. Tink. Oh, well, no, this is paint water. Well, then why'd you let me choose yeah, okay, it? Get, I get, let me drink it. I wasn't paying attention. I just want to sit. Okay. How much would you pay for this? 
<laughs> it's priceless. <laughs> you, you tell me in dollars. Oh no. Yes. In dollars for a, a painting on paper that size, it's so hard to say. Quit dodging a the million, question. A million dollars? Okay, now you're just lying. 